Have you ever had an idea for a quick and simple little project and you start working on it and suddenly you realize this thing is not quick or simple in the slightest? Long story short, my game now has multiplayer code in it. No, this was not supposed to be a multiplayer game, and no, this was not an issue of scope creep where I suddenly decided to add multiplayer. I was trying to do something way simpler, and because I didn't know exactly what I was doing, I didn't know what problem I was solving, and I ended up reinventing the wheel in some incredibly stupid ways. So this is Space Rock Survivors, this is Devlog 3, and I have been planning these devlog cycles up front. The goal for today's video is to update the graphics for this game, but I also want to market this game. This is my first real Steam game, and I want to do really awesome before and after shots of my graphical updates. So let's make a quick before and after shot for Reddit. I'm going to grab two different bits of footage and put them together, and I mean, it's kind of interesting, like you can see there's a difference between the two, but there's no consistency to highlight the contrast. I was watching a Let's Play the other day, and I saw this really cool thing that happened. So this guy's doing City Skylines content, and at the end of his videos, he's taking before and after shots. And it's pretty obvious how he's doing this. All of the effects are actually happening in the video editing side, because he has the exact same shots that he can just splice together. So I decided I was going to do that. I want to make a quick script that enables me to save and replay my gameplay in engine. So the first thing I did was I started recording and replaying all of the mouse inputs and key presses. And this turned out to be weirdly difficult. Apparently the inputs are a really complex thing and there isn't a built in option to save an input just in general. You have to know exactly what kind of input it is, you have to know what information is relevant, and then you have to extract that particular bit of information and perfectly reconstruct the input in order for it to be accepted, and it has all these weird issues and edge cases. This took quite some time, but I did get it mostly working. Uh, unfortunately, I can capture and replay mouse inputs, but it doesn't actually click the buttons, which is kind of weird. I don't know why, but I'm tired of troubleshooting the input events, so I just decided to capture the press signal. Uh, you can record that when that happens and send it back in. So I just write down each time a button is pressed, and then I will tell that button to emit the signal as if it were pressed when I'm replaying the game. So that's good enough, I guess. If I play this though, uh, here I'm going to record my input and then we're going to play it back and you'll notice things look completely different. If I overlay these, there's a huge issue and that issue is randomness. A uh, code's a little boring, so I'm going to demonstrate with a board game instead. So I'm going to grab this game. Uh, this one is a simple game where you're moving the pieces around, but you'll notice there is a captive dice. And so this is the same thing as the random functions in my game. I have these calls all throughout my code. I didn't think about it when I was putting them in. But when I have this captive dice, there's no way for me to manually choose what number I get. I just hit it and I get a number. So if I'm going to try to record my actions, uh, let's say I just pick which piece I move each turn and I try to replay this game, you'll notice it quickly gets desynchronized. Uh, so I was supposed to move piece number one here, but I didn't actually roll a one or a six on the other game. So I can't move this piece. These two games have the exact same inputs, but they end up in completely different places very quickly. So we need something better. Now at first, this looks like the exact same game. You draw cards, you move your pieces, exact same desynchronization issue, except we now have access to the deck before the game starts, which means we can use something called a fixed seed. If we play multiple games with the exact same deck, we should get identical game states as we're going through. This is a little bit harder in practice than in theory. I wasn't thinking about randomness when I initially designed this game, uh, even the rebuild. So there are dice rolls hidden everywhere. I do need to connect all of them back to the same deck of cards. And at this point, I expected this project to be done. The thing I didn't take into account was the physics. So I've been using a board game as an analogy, but this is actually more like driving a car or playing a board game while driving a car while blindfolded. Make like, sure you can give the same car the same inputs twice, but it's not going to end up in the same place both times. <laughs> as crazy as this sounds, my game stability right now is literally dependent on the ambient temperature in the room I'm in. So I went down a rabbit hole and spent hours and hours on a mismatched detection and resynchronization system. Basically, I keep just stuffing the cards back in the deck when I detect that things are messed up. 
As you might expect, the first desynchronization event is followed by a whole bunch more until it's just so out of whack that I abort the replay. I don't really know what I was expecting here. Uh, this whole thing is actually an inverted pendulum with no feedback mechanism. So it's going to be guaranteed to fall over. The question is just when. Uh, and the answer to that seems to be after about 10 or 20 seconds. <laughs> I was thinking, I just want to use this for marketing. I just want to be able to record some gameplay and play it again. So maybe this is good enough. Uh, but I just, uh, yeah. It took me way too long, but I eventually realized this whole approach is a lost cause. I ended up reverting everything, except for the input recorder script itself. The button press replay is working fine, and if I turn off the asteroids, the player movement seems fine too. I'm just going to record the player's position each frame and set that on the next replay. So that's a step in the right direction, but it's still broken. Um, at this point, I started cutting a lot of things out of the game. I'm planning a major overhaul of the weapon upgrade system, so I just dumped all of that for now. Uh, Lex Complexity is going to make it a little bit easier to get this working up front. Okay, so here's my final solution, sort of. Uh, it's still really messy, but I created a whole bunch of random number generators everywhere. Each individual asteroid or bullet or whatever, it gets its own deck of cards now. And the input recorder will send a message to the spawn system to create the asteroid, for example, and it will hand the asteroid its deck of cards to use. If everyone's playing with their own deck, there shouldn't be any way this can get desynchronized, right? Okay, wrong. <laughs> Your score is still dependent on physics objects colliding with other physics objects. Again, it's the inverted pendulum with no feedback. It will collapse every single time. And all this work is honestly just delaying the inevitable. At this point, I took a long break to finish a video about scope creep and finish another video about how I need to accept failure. But I'm not accepting failure. I realized that I was thinking about this wrong. I'm not actually making an input replay system here. I'm making multiplayer. I know it doesn't look like it, but think about it. The core issue with this whole project right now is that I can't keep two systems synchronized. These systems are separated by time, but that doesn't necessarily have to be the case. They could be running simultaneously, but be separated by space instead. That's what multiplayer is. So I was struggling to invent a solution to this problem, but if I reframe it as temporal multiplayer, multiplayer across time, the solution becomes pretty obvious. I just need to do what standard multiplayer code does. So step one is going to be to throw away all the randomness nonsense. Like I was trying to recreate a series of events, but that's not how multiplayer works. I don't send a I fired a bullet signal and hope that the other computer reaches the same conclusion that I reached. You decide who gets the master copy and everyone else just gets copies of the game state each frame, or you get changes, incremental changes, whatever. With that in mind, I put together a puppeteer class. This was actually really, really easy to do. So it is a child of whatever node I care about, and all it's gonna do is each frame is going to go through and collect a bunch of properties. A really cool thing Godot has is a generic get and set function, which actually takes the property name as a string. So if I come into my input recorder here, you'll see as I'm setting up the player node, I will simply add the position rotation and is thrusting variables to an array. And this object will then go through and it will capture these each frame and then put them back each frame. A really cool side effect of this approach is that I can still use setters and getters. So here in my player script, I have the thrusting variable. When it is true, it plays the thrusting animation. So if I go to play back my game recording, I'm in replay mode right now, you'll see that this thruster is doing its animation. And that is just a simple side effect of using this getter and setter. The final component though is going to be spawning things. So these asteroids are still coming from everywhere. How do I manage that? Well, I realized I could just do a loop back function here. So I am now doing all of my randomness in a get parameters call. Uh, this is going to send up a dictionary, which will contain the velocity, linear and angular, and then uh, I don't even remember what this was used for. Some other random number used for something else. Uh, but all of this randomness happens here. Then when I create these objects, I'll just pass this back in. 
So if I come back to my spawn script, you'll see how this works. Uh, I am actually doing a spawn object .emit. I'm sending up that signal and I'm grabbing the default parameters at that point. So this is actually connected to itself. Uh, it'll call on spawn object and it'll send the signal. It'll immediately catch the signal and then it'll use these inputs to set all of these various outputs. And so when I am replaying, uh, I will just do the same thing. I'll do this loopback call. And in here, when I am playing, it will just call the same function. Right now for the asteroids and the bullets, I am letting those replay using the physics engine. But obviously if there are issues with that, I will definitely convert all of these to use that puppeteer. One other really cool side effect of this thing, I'm just going to add in an option to continually replay and I can change things as the game is running so I can be actively developing things like uh, the colors of objects or uh, adding particle effects or doing whatever as the game is running. So you notice I just put the stars in, uh, come back through, turn on the screen effects, like all of these things can be changed in real time. This gives me the ability to prototype the gameplay and the art separately. So going forwards, I'm not going to be playing my game if I'm not actively developing the gameplay. I'm going to be watching my past self play the game as I'm developing it. And I think that's going to fix a lot of the problems you see in development where developers get really uh, used to their own game and they start to overlook issues. Obviously, I do still want playtesters. I decided to do something fun and make this game available at the link below as I'm developing it. So this one, version 0.3.0, you can check out and play. It is going to have a lot more features in my next devlog, but I wanted to get this base foundation in. Uh, all in all, I'm really excited with the way this turned out. I'm really happy that I can develop my game as I'm playing it. Like That is a really cool ability to have, um, and I am just overall super happy with uh, this project, even though this wasn't the original goal for uh, this video. <laughs> hey, and if you're curious, like I said, game is available, link in the description, so you can check it out in its current form. Uh, you can also check out the source code. This is free, open source, MIT licensed, so the goal will be to give it away on itch, but also sell it on Steam. So I will have a wish list in a future devlog, and if you want to support my development, you can go there. If you just want to check out the game, it is going to be available, exact same game, for free. So that's the plan. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.